I wanted to be a leader who made a difference, she said. And so she did. She became a leader that made a difference. And I know all of you, you baby boomer women who are in your second act, you want to make a difference also. You want to be a leader who does something and accomplishes something. I'm going to help you do that with today's Time for Books video book review on lipsticking.com. We have How Remarkable Women Lead Because It's February, and this is our February book. I'm Yvonne DeVita. But the important thing here is Joanna Barsh, who was one of the authors, and Susie Cranston is the other author, she wanted to make a difference. Let me read to you what she had to say about that. This is from the introduction of the book. Uh, it's so important. I do like to read the little things from my books um, because it's just so important to share these things. And in this How Remarkable Women Lead, uh, based on research from the Centered Leadership Project, uh, it can help you the way it helped me, I hope. That's, that's my goal, to make a difference. But listen, she, she writes in the introduction, so during the spring of my 51st year, I waited and worked, fearing the call, but hoping for some magic to appear that would transform me into the senior leader I wanted to be. She was waiting for magic. You know, I believe we have magic inside of us. I believe that we women, especially baby boomers, but all women, tend to kind of make something wonderful out of old boxes and strings and things we find in the attic. And uh, we, we don't let life stop us because we don't have the skills or we don't have the, um, the tools. We go find them. And, and this is where she says, Joanna says, most of all, I wanted to be the leader who could look in the mirror and know that she had helped make a difference in the world. That's a really big statement. It's a statement that we all tell ourselves inside. And sometimes when I'm at networking events, I talk to women um, anywhere from really seriously 40 on up and in um, often younger women, but the 40 on up women, that's a big part of what they want to do in their business. They want to make a difference in the world. It isn't just about them. It isn't just about their talents that they bring to the table. It isn't just about, hey, I've now left my corporate job or I've been home with the kids or I worked in something else and I'm starting a whole new second act. It isn't just that. There's an undercurrent of wanting to achieve something good for the entire world. And of course, we always start with our own community, don't we? We start local in our neighborhood, our community, and it goes further. We live in a social world where everything can reach a worldwide audience. But I always impress upon people to start local. So in, in How Remarkable Women Lead, she also talks about the women that were introduced introduced women who were interviewed for the book for the project the leadership project and she says she says our women told fascinating stories mesmerizing stories stories filled with energy you know and that's that's something that oh i don't know <laughs> tv and media and whatnot like to throw at baby boomers, um, both genders, that, oh, they're old now. They're, they're not energetic. They can't get things done. They're tired. Um, and truth of the matter is we're not tired. We're energized. We have fascinating stories to tell, and we're going to tell them. Now, in How Remarkable Women Lead, um, th this book really kept my interest and had me turning page by page by page because it spoke to my heart, spoke to me as a woman, spoke to me as a new entrepreneur. And when I say new, I mean starting something new. I've been an entrepreneur. I've started several businesses and uh, it's not easy. Uh, sometimes it's not even fun. 
You have to have fun. You have to put fun into it, but sometimes it's not. It brings worry. It brings anxiety. But you know, it brings energy. It brings just excitement. It, it, there's there's a certain level when you're starting a new business, you're an entrepreneur, and you're becoming a leader in your local community. Again, that will have those ripples all the way out. There's a certain um, accomplishment there. Now, women tend not to talk about those accomplishments. Uh, we can have a whole session on that. Uh, but the truth of the matter is accomplishments matter. They're important. Uh, own up to them. I will tell you this. When you're out and about and someone compliments you, whether it's on your hair, women get a lot of compliments on hair or comments on hair, whether it's about the way you speak or something you've done or a project, especially a project you've completed that turned out wonderful. Okay, when someone says how great that is, the answer is not, oh, it was nothing. Oh, I couldn't have done it um, without this or that or the other thing. Oh, you know, the answer when someone compliments you is thank you. That's all. If they go on to ask you how you did it and all of those other things, then you can go on and tell them. But the answer to a compliment is always just thank you. Now, let's move on and talk a little bit about how, um, how Joanna in uh, Start With Your Strengths shares with her readers uh, some core things that you can do uh, to become more powerful, to, to embrace your strengths and actually get things done and start practicing those thank yous when people compliment you. So she says, start with your strengths, page 43. Many women we've met who are naturally outspoken seem to clam up when asked about their strengths. Modesty is a strength, but we wondered if something else was going on. Using a pre-made list made it easier for women to spot themselves. That's why we turned to a strengths framework developed by positive psychologists Martin Siegelman and Chris Peterson. They identified 24 strengths with universal application based on an extensive review of societies across geographics, religions, and ages. Their list may spark your own thinking on core strengths that can be building blocks to meaning for you. I'm going to share these, of course, in the writings here, but let me read them out now. One, wisdom. This includes curiosity, love of learning, judgment, ingenuity, emotional intelligence, and perspective. I really love that they put that first. I really love that they're equating wisdom with things like curiosity and love of learning. Courage. Valor, perseverance, and integrity. I kind of underlined integrity. Let's never lose our integrity, ladies. Humanity, kindness, and loving. Justice, citizenship, fairness, and leadership. I mean, leadership fits in all of these, but we tend to think of leadership more as something that is bigger than just um, getting a project done. But it's not. Leader, leadership comes in all um, shapes and sizes, and it is part of justice. Temperance. This is self-control, prudence, and humility. This is where you say the thank you without denigrating yourself by saying, oh, I couldn't have done it without this, and without being overly boasting by saying, oh, I know because I'm the most wonderful thing in the world. You, there's, a, there's a certain amount of humility needed there. And transcendence appreciation of beauty and excellence gratitude hope spirituality forgiveness humor and zest in this particular time of our lives as baby boomer women in our second act i think transcendence is so enormous 
I see this appreciation of beauty and when I'm talking about that here in Colorado, of course, we are very big on the environment, on the mountains, on the outdoors, on the, um, the grass that our dogs like to walk on. It's just an amazing thing to get to a place in your life where you can embrace the transcendence that comes with getting older and learning and um, embracing forgiveness. Sometimes the forgiveness is for yourself. Forgive yourself. You know, the past is past. The present is here now. The future is an unknown. You can make your own future. You make your own future by embracing those five traits. And that's today's video book review of how remarkable women lead. You see, I have all these bookmarks in here. And I keep them in there because I go back and refer to those pages. This is an enormously um, powerful book that I just can't recommend it enough. You need to go out and get it. You need to read it. You need to put all the little things in it like I have, all the underlines and all the, the notes and um, referring. And we, we will come back next week and we're going to talk a little bit more about it. This particular, um, whoops, 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 whoops. Next week, I really want to talk about dreaming with purpose. I want to talk about our purpose when we start these new second acts of our lives. This is Yvonne DeVita, time for books, and February's book is How Remarkable Women Lead. See you next week.